All right, so I want to turn my focus toward the analog synth engines that are here to create these different drum sounds. And I think a good way to go about that is just to start with the default kit. So what I will do, I'm going to go back to the kit menu. I'm going to hold function and press the button that says effects and then kit in red. Again, we hold function to access things that are in red. So I go here. And what I want to do is instead of loading a kit or saving a kit, I simply want to clear the kit. Now keep in mind, when I clear a kit, it's not going to erase the current kit that's loaded. It's just basically going to erase all the different settings and whatnot to their default. And the kit that was there is totally fine. It's only going to get erased if I save the cleared kit in the same kit slot as the one that I'm currently using. For example, let's go back to where it says load kit. The kit that I'm currently loading, it's kit number three, RALAX. If I keep going down here, we have many more kits. And then I have some empty kit slots. And again, this is in the presets project, so that's why there were so many other kits that are already there. If I wanted to, I could clear the current kit and then I could save it into an empty clip slot and then the kit that I cleared is preserved because that kit is in a separate slot. If I clear the kit and then I save it in the same slot, then I would overwrite this kit that's here and then I would lose it. So I just want to make that clear. If I clear the kit, I'm not going to lose what's currently here. So let me back out of this. Not load, we'll clear. Confirm, yes. Okay, so now, So now we can hear what the default synth engines are for these different tracks. So let's just kind of go through and see what the options are, because like I said, not every single track can use all the synth engines that are available. Some can use more than others, and some have a little bit more variety in terms of different kick sounds and snare sounds. So the old track, select the bass drum. The bass drum track has been selected. This is our first sound. So looking at the synth parameter page right here, we have our tuning, we have sweep time, we have our snap amount. Let me go ahead and turn this up. We have our dedicated level right here, and I just want to turn this track up a bit more. And let's just go ahead and turn up the master volume too. Okay. So, if you've never made drum sounds before utilizing synthesis, ultimately what's happening here is we have a waveform of some type, uh, possibly a sine wave, sounds more like a sine wave, with a very quick uh, pitch envelope where the pitch quickly drops at the beginning at the attack of the sound, and that's what gives us the attack of the kick drum sound. If we didn't have that quick pitch envelope where the pitch quickly drops, it would just sound like some sort of sustaining bass note as opposed to sounding like a kick that has a prominent attack. So we can shape a lot of those things here. So if I change the sweep time to zero, and let's bring the snap amount down and turn the tick here down. Doesn't sound as much like a kick as it did before. If I increase the decay time here, now it sounds a lot more like a bass sound as opposed to a kick drum sound. Now if I increase the sweep time, we get a better sense of that quick pitch envelope. We hear the pitch is starting at a much higher pitch than what we got when we were decaying this. And if I increase the decay time here, that gives you a chance to hear the pitch actually dropping. Now, if I double tap the synth button here, I can see the different synth engines that are available to me for this particular track. So we have bass drum hard, bass drum classic, Bass drum FM, some frequency modulated bass sound. This plastic one, which is actually pretty cool to play with. We have our silky kick. This is probably the closest that you're gonna get to more of a, a acoustic kick sound. And we have our sharp kick. But in addition to that, as we saw from the previous kit that we had loaded, we also have snare drum engines that can be utilized on the bass drum track. And we have a noise generator. Every track has a noise generator available to it. And we can use that for some very nice sounding snares and hi-hats. And then we have an impulse, which is just basically that. If for some reason you don't want to use a synth engine at all for a particular track, you could disable it, or you could simply just turn the volume down once we go back to this page, because the synth engine has its own dedicated volume level. Now, I scrolled through all that, but I didn't hit yes, so I didn't actually switch the sound that was currently here. If I double tap the synth 
page again to get to the different synth machines. If I actually want to switch this to a different one, let's say my plastic bass drum, I could hit yes to confirm it, and now I've got that. The different bass drum synth engines will have different types that you can choose from, which again will vary depending on the bass drum synth engine that you choose. So now if we switch to the snare drum track, you might notice that the parameters that are available are different from what we had on the bass drum track because we're using a different synthesis method in order to create this snare drum. So we have parameters that are relevant to that. Typically when you're making a snare drum using uh, synthesis, using analog synthesis, there's gonna be a noise generator involved. And that noise generator is there to typically mimic the sound of the snares that are on the bottom of the snare drum. So I see there's a noise decay here. And if I increase that, we can hear that noise played out a little bit longer. And then we also have our sweep time, which is again, another pitch envelope that kind of helps add that attack, that sense of attack to the snare. And then the sweep depth, which is basically how far is that pitch envelope gonna go from the attack to the actual pitch that it's sustaining at. The higher the depth, the more pronounced the attack can be. Now again, if we increase the decay time, we end up with something that sounds more like a melodic sound. And that's the beauty of using synthesis for this is that there's only really so much that you can do to tweak samples. But when it comes to shaping a sound using synthesis, there's a lot more variety and a lot more options. And uh, we'll be exploring that all throughout this course. Now, if I double tap here, we'll notice that we start off with the synth engines for the snare drum. But we can also access the synth engines for the bass drum and then our noise generator and our impulse. So we have a lot of flexibility with these two. If we move over to the rim shot, let me go ahead and select that. Double tap here. We have two different rim shots to choose from. We have a few different bass drum synth engines to choose from, a couple different snare drum engines to choose from. We have a classic clap. So we have quite a bit of variety here on the rim shot track. And again, the rim shot and the clap are sharing the same voice, so just keep that in mind. Now, as we go through the different sounds here, I'm not gonna go through every single one, one by one, because if you have the machine, you should be exploring this yourself. But the point is, is that we're using different methods of synthesis in order to make these sounds. Now, when we get to the point of importing samples, combining these in some unique ways is gonna be really useful. And as you can see, we can shape these sounds to make them seem a bit more melodic as opposed to percussive. A good example would be the cowbell, which is right here, CB. Hold track, press the pad, this is now selected. So you have a typical electronic cowbell sound right there. If I double tap the synth button, we have two different cowbell types to choose from. And then CY stands for symbol. So you have a few different symbols to choose from, and then that's basically it. Now, if I stick with the classic cowbell here, we see the parameters are pretty limited. We have the tuning, we have detune, and we have decay. But again, if we increase the decay amount, we get this nice pitch. We can detune this. We can actually detune these in intervals. And then if we go to our amp page, we can shape the volume over time. We have a filter page here where we can shape the filter and utilize a filter envelope to shape that over time as well. So just to kind of give you an idea of how much can be done just using the synth engines available to us on Rhythm.